coming to you from ACNN. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's just take this worship song as we continue. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. I am that I am. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Jehovah Jireh. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. I am that I am. There is no one like you. Righteous and ever living creature, we say there is none like you. There's no one as merciful. There's no one as kind, as loving as you are. Thank you for this ample opportunity. As we look into your world, may you minister to our souls and answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we shall be speaking on the topic that says, You shall possess your possession. You shall possess your possession. And our text is taken from Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. Obadiah 1 17 says, But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be righteousness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. That is the word of God for us today. You shall possess your possession. After this meeting today, whatever that is due for you, whatever the Lord has ordained for you, shall come to you in the name of Jesus. That position, that power, that honor, that prestige, they will locate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Where we read, come straight with the topic, you shall possess your possession. We know what possession is all about. That is what belongs to you. It can be called inheritance. It can be called what is due for you. There are many people today that their rights are denied. They are due for promotion but because of one reason or other, they remain where they are. There are people that are forces and powers are fighting, contending over their promotion, over their joy. There are people their joy has been held, which is held by the enemy. There are people that are held in abject poverty. They have tried all they could, but they remain where they are. After this meeting, I, I see you accelerating. I see you moving to possess your possession. I see you assuming your position, both physical and spiritual, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, for you to fulfill God's purpose in your life, you must possess your possession. For you to reach where God has ordained for you in life, you must possess your possession. In every stage of life, that's what the Lord gives give to you. Possession is not what you, it is you, what is due to you. Possession means what the Lord has given unto you. And that is what the Lord told the prophet. He said, on Mount Zion. That is very critical. What is Zion? Zion simply means the house of God. Praise the Lord. We are people of God gather. It means the church. Are you a believer? There are conditions in possessing. You can only possess what belongs to you. If you are not a child of God, it will be difficult. And that is why he said, on Mount Zion. That is the church. Do you belong to the church of God? Are you a believer in Christ? Are you born again? Have you accepted Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior? If you have accepted him, there is a portion for you. There are blessings for you. Because that blessing is for those that are on Mount Zion. Hallelujah. 
So for you to possess your possession, there's need for you to belong to the household of faith. Those who are outside the commonwealth of Israel may not receive that blessing. It is only meant for those who are on Mount Zion. And the Lord began to teach us here, to tell us that on the same mountain, that there shall be deliverance. Today, the Lord is delivering you. Whatever power that holds you bound, I have seen deliverance come your way. I have seen God intervening in that matter. In as much as you dwell in that mountain of Zion, deliverance is guaranteed. Deliverance is guaranteed. Healing is guaranteed. Protection is, is your right. Promotion is your right. Honor is your right. The blessedness of the Lord belongs to you. Deliverance will come your way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Again, it's in righteousness. It's our right. Hallelujah. Believers are possessors of righteousness. The Bible says the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It means you will blossom. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, say righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness promotes, lifts up a man, breaks chains and shackles. Righteousness Lift you up to a place where your life cannot carry you. Righteousness can take you to a place where your certificate cannot take you to. Righteousness can promote you to a place of honor where nobody can take you to. So righteousness is the key. So when you are before you possess, there should be righteousness. Do you have righteousness with you? Are you a righteous man? Because there is a limit to a sinner we go. A heart that is corrupt, there is a limit to that, to that person we go. But the, to any man who have righteousness in him, brethren, is a possessor of the blessedness of God. A man that has righteousness in him has the power to possess that which the law has portioned for him. Hallelujah. Do you have righteousness in you? Are you a child that righteousness dwell in? Hallelujah. Brethren, if that is your portion, the Lord is saying that you will possess your possession. I don't know what the Lord has planned for you. I don't know what the Lord has ordained for you. I don't know what the Lord has already planned that you should assume. By the virtue of the prayer this hour, the Lord will give you grace to possess that which he has given unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. And we begin to appreciate God. Honor the Lord. Give worship to Him. Righteous and ever living God, we give you glory. We thank you, Lord, because heaven and earth will pass away. But your word will never, never pass away. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You always pay people according. You are not a debtor to any man. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. Thank you for opening our eyes that, oh God, there is a possession. There is a deposit. There is an inheritance which you have ordained for your children. And thank you for the opportunity to assess them. In the mighty name of Jesus, can you begin to pray, say, today I possess my possession. Make sure that possession, what you know that, that is your own, whatever that belongs to you, begin to cry unto the Lord. Begin to cry unto the Lord. That position, that honor, that office, that power that the Lord has ordained for you, begin to assume it. Say, I step into it. I am possessing my possession. My health is my possession. Are you sick in your body? The Bible said, by his stripe we are healed. He is the bread of the children of God. Sickness is a stranger. Say, I possess my health. I possess my health. I possess my health. Pray for yourself. Are you planning on asking God for marriage? Call upon the Lord. 
the perfect connector who connected Elizabeth, Zachariah with Elizabeth. The God that led Isaac to Rebecca. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Say, I possess that which you give to me. I possess it today. Is it your finances that is hanging on the air? Can you begin to lay hold on it? By faith, say, I lay hold on our finances. Let that money come to me. Let that money come to me. There shall be no more delay. That contract that is hanging, let it be released. Let that contract be released in the mighty name of Jesus. That delay in childbearing. Can you say, I am possessing my child? I possess my child. There shall be no more delay. The Bible said there shall be no barrenness in our time and generation. The word of God is yes and amen. If you say there shall be no barrenness, there shall be no barrenness. And there will not be barrenness. You are not barren. You are not barren. Can you ask God, give me my child. I possess my child. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is this academic excellency you need? You have been going backward. Say, I possess my retentive memory. I possess excellency in my academic. I possess excellency in my academic. In the mighty name of Jesus. That project that you could not be able to accomplish. Say, Lord, that is my possession. It is my possession to accomplish it. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to accomplish it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 18, the Bible says, Violence shall no longer be heard in your land. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land. Oh, peace is your possession. Violence should no longer be heard. Can you begin to pray in Nigeria, in, line, in Asia, in Europe, all over the world, in Africa, there shall be no violence. There shall be no violence. Every spirit of violence, killings of lives and properties, they are hereby destroyed. That power is cancelled. That power is destroyed. Every blood-sucking demon, power that constitutes and cause wars, killings of life, we cancel. Bible said there shall be no violence. There shall be no violence. Every violence in our nation. We cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. The Bible says, There shall be no hiding place for the enemies. Anywhere the enemies are hiding in our nation, in our villages, in our countries, the Bible says, There shall be no hiding place. Say, For the wicked, Psalm 1 to 5 verse 13 says, For the wicked shall not dwell in the land allotted for the righteous, so that the righteous will not put his hands to iniquity. Every wickedness in our nature, the Bible says, The wickedness of the wicked shall slay him. And the Bible said it clearly here, There shall be no hiding place for them. Say, For the wicked shall not dwell in the land allotted for the righteous. So that the righteous will not put his hands to do evil. Everywhere the enemies are occupying, Lord, may you erase them. Wherever they have gathered every contention over this land, over our family, over our country, Lord, we command it to be destroyed. Every hiding place for evil people, contending over this nation, bringing shame, killings of life, Lord, wherever they are, because your word made it clear for us, there is no hiding place for them. May you expose, may you disappoint those who are waiting for our downfall, for the downfall of the nation. Lord, may they wait in vain. May they wait in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray again that the Lord will favor you. Psalm 102, verse 12 to 13. Psalm 102, 12 to 13. You shall rise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her has come. The time to favor her has come. Can you say, this is my time for favor? This is my time to be favored. 
This is my time to be favored. It's not tomorrow, it is now. For said, the Bible says, I shall rise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her has come. This is your time of favor. This is your time of remembrance. This is your time for promotion. This is your time for healing. This is your time for honor and promotion. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray by the power of your word, you say you will rise and have mercy upon me. And my time of favor has come. Lord, may you favor me. May you favor the church. May you favor your children. May you favor our nation. May you favor men and women. Those who are calling upon you, may your favor rest upon us. In the name of Jesus. In Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9, Leviticus 26, 9 says, For I will look on you favorably. Can you say, Lord, look upon me favorably? When the Lord look favorably on you, you will not struggle. Fruitless labor will end. Pain will become thing of the past. When the Lord favors a man, he will stand with kings. Say, for I will look on you favorably. Can you make it a prayer? Say, Lord, look unto me with favor. Look unto me favorably. Look unto my family favorably. Look upon the church favorably. Look upon our leaders favorably. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, may your favor rest upon us. May your mercy rest upon us. Make your faithfulness be felt in us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, where we took our topic says, possessing your possession. Are you possessing your possession? Have you possessed your possession? God is ready to give you that which belongs to you. God is ready to lift you up. God is ready to promote you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray again for this following diocese. We have dioceses here. We are going to pray for any good diocese. Any good diocese. Let's pray that the Lord will strengthen the diocese. That the diocese of Enugu will see glory. They will see the power of God in new dimension. This diocese will be strengthened. This diocese will be quickened. This diocese will be energized. They will not go down. The diocese of Enugu will not go down. Oh, in their mission outreaches, Lord, prosper them. In their finances, Lord, prosper them. In all that they put their hands to do, Lord, please prosper them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The diocese is still vacant. Shall we pray for the election that the Lord will give us a man after his own heart? Let his will take place in any good. Let the will of God preside in any good diocese. Lord, choose a man after your own heart that will lead the diocese. Lord, we ask that your power will be made bare. Preside over all that happen in the house of Enugu. We pray for the parishioners, all the worshippers of God in that diocese. Lord, we ask for revival. Let it cut across on every parish, in every congregation. Let there be revival. For the day of your power, people shall be willing. Your word said that the church shall march on, and the gate of hell shall not prevail over it. Enugu diocese will march on. In the mission, they will march on. Physically, they will march on. Numerically, they will march on. In all the ways, they will march on. They will not go down. The dust of Enugu will not suffer shame. They will not go bankruptcy. They will not go down. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, here before us is also the dust of Calabar. Calabar diocese. Can we pray for the dust of Calabar? Pray for the diocese. Bishop and Mama. Uh, Calabar diocese that the Lord will strengthen them, that the grace of God will abound, that the mercy of God will prevail over them in Jesus' name. We are going to pray again for diocese of the coast, diocese on the coast. Lord, we are that the diocese will stand. May the diocese on the coast stand firm. Lord, all the dreams and visions of the diocese May you perfect it. May you perfect it. All that you have for them, may they possess it. Give them grace to possess the land. 
give them grace to possess the land. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the thousands on the coast. In the mission outreaches, Lord, prosper them. In all they do, in the mission area, the Lord will ask that the church will start praying. Quicken them, energize them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for all the workers in those thousands. Lord, strengthen them. We do them with the righteousness. Fill them with your power. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.